911 Talk Podcast, Episode 68, for Monday, January 30th, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Pilot Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. That's a sound that many of us are all too familiar with. You hear them at the mall, parking lots, and football games, and they've become so common that we barely take notice anymore. In fact, most of the time, it's not a robbery. It's usually just somebody getting too close or bumping into a vehicle. That set off the alarm. And more time than not, they're false alarms. And we pay little notice. Except for the standard ending of, wait for it, that's the one. I was reading an article over breakfast this morning that brought me back to an article that was written at the beginning of this year by Mark Gomez of the Mercury News. It seems that even the San Jose police are dealing with the issue of false alarms, not from vehicles necessarily, but from businesses. With nearly 12,000 of all alarms that occurred in 2010, 98.4% turned out to be false alarms. Now with today's ever-shrinking public safety budgets and citizens demanding that police do more with less, the $662,203 that police say it cost them to respond to those alarms is a huge burden to carry. Some say that fines for repeated alarms should be implemented. In fact, San Jose does have a policy for that. However, those fines, $466,633 worth, still left a 30% deficit over the cost. Now, San Jose Police Chief Chris Moore wrote that, quote, the primary purpose of police is to respond to reported crimes, preventative patrols, and community policing. And the practice of responding to all audible alarms does not accomplish any of those goals, unquote. Now, it also should be noted that Moore's department has also been hit with a 20% decrease in resources over the past two years and has been forced to scale back on other operations to maintain patrol levels. This is an area where public safety can utilize some intelligent workflow concepts that are used in the day-to-day operations and contact centers that streamline the communications interactions between the caller and the call taker. San Jose reacted to the increase of audible alarms in an all-or-nothing manner based on statistical data that they had. 98.4% of audible alarms are false. False alarms are audible alarms. Audible alarms do not require police response. Now, the problem with that logic is that audible alarms are associated with false alarms, when in fact the logic should be that of false alarms, 98.4% of them come from businesses that do not manage their alarm system properly, causing the false alarms. You see, the missing statistic is what part of all the alarm systems are represented by the businesses creating those false alarms, the 98.4%. It could be the classic example of one bad apple spoiling the entire bunch, or at least a small group of them. What needs to happen in the 911 center is a correlation of the origination point of the emergent event with details of the event, if available, and some history on previous event outcomes. Using this prioritization intelligence, we won't necessarily have to deny service to any one particular caller or event originator, but during times of overload, we can effectively manage and prioritize inbound call traffic based on additional information. Next Generation 911 will make further use of this additional information, and in fact, there's a specific work group that's dealing with this very topic. That work group is the Next Generation 911 Additional Data Work Group. Go figure. This is not new technology. It's not a new idea. This is something that's been done in the enterprise space in some of the largest call centers in the world for the past 10 to 15 years. It's really only because we've had a 40 plus year old architecture in our nation's emergency services network. And we've been handcuffed with using caller ID or Annie as our sole index to additional information. And that additional information has been limited to a street address that we haven't deployed these common call handling methods and concepts to public safety today. Sure, public safety is experiencing a budget crunch each and every year. But guess what, folks? The economy has been tanking for the last 10 years, and businesses have been forced to get lean and mean. One of the primary ways that a public-facing company can minimize their expense of, quote, customer contact, unquote, is to use technology to streamline that interaction and minimize the expense. In order for public safety to survive, we'll have to either shovel more money into the furnace or get a more efficient furnace that burns a little less money. 
Now, in my opinion, the latter provides a more efficient environment for public safety, as well as more services for the public they serve, as well as an evolution path that brings the current emergency services network out of the dark ages. Call me crazy, but spending a few dollars on next generation 911 just might lower the overall bill. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, product line manager for emergency services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911.